that's just silly. Uh, look, it's not going to work up here in there. Update of your games. Wait, see if anybody jumps on. Of course, I put the camera right in the middle of things. was there and then they left. There we go. So we're just going to hang out a second and see if anybody shows up. I don't have any makeup on today, so y'all will just have to deal with that. If there's two of you here, you could say hi. See, and I've covered up my spot where it shows me who's on and who's not, so I can't see. Hey, Weston. Hello from Canada. I don't have any makeup on, so you guys are just going to have to deal with me being fresh faced today. So I've got a couple of things that we can talk about today. Representing my little Shearwater t-shirt today. And I keep looking around my camera to see if I can see how many we have here. What? Oh, thank you. No makeup underwater. That's right. Um, it would be it would be a terrible, terrible thing to waste. Who needs makeup underwater? Although if I do wear it, I tend to wear waterproof mascara, but you know. So Let's talk about IE. That's done. Finally. I've also finally today, just today, had my card show up in my SSI app. There was some fighting going on around documentation and trying to get all of my ducks in a row to make sure I had all the right documentation for SSI to process everything. And that was a bit of a mess. <laughs> uh, but we have we have those those here now. I can I can uh, officially show you. Oh, it's backwards. Yay. Let's see if it'll go that way. There we go. Look. It's my face. Will it zoom in? It will not. As you can see, it's finally showed up, which is nice. That was a crazy experience. Uh, we ended up at a crater in Utah, which was really cool. It was 96 degrees ish. And um, you have to forgive me if you look. You can see, you can see out my front window. <laughs> you can see out my front window. So we had a small group of us at uh, this particular location in Utah. We were from all over the place. The majority of the folks were with Dive Ventures, which is great. It was, I want to say, four or five, maybe six of us. Two of the candidates were from different dive shops. Uh, everyone that I had met was absolutely wonderful. We had a great time. 96 degrees. That sounds much better than it's freezing. It is free. Absolutely freezing outside. Uh, and hello, Dive Talk. I am uh, glad to see that you're here. We had uh, about six candidates. Two were one. One guy was from Vegas. Another gal was from Colorado, I want to say. I made friends with absolutely everybody who ended up showing up. But the crater was cool. Uh, it was a uh, you big, huge mound on the outside. And you go on the inside. They have lockers and some changing rooms. Uh, you walk by the front desk. 
after you get to the front desk, they have um, a, an area that's kind of, uh, there's some racks there where you can place gear that you're, you don't need while you're underwater. You walk in and I want to say this, this, this space is no bigger than a couple of hundred feet. I'm sure there's a website, it'll tell you all about it. Uh, but it does a balmy set. That's cold too. Let's see, y'all are going to have to keep the cold temperatures. I'm going to, especially up in Canada, I'm not feeling that. I, I'm already wearing sweatshirts and staying inside because it's cold. But you walk into the area where you actually fall into the water. There is a small platform to the right where you're able to do a little bit of a briefing or debriefing, put gear on, prep, and get ready to go down under the water. The cool thing about this, hey, Stephanie, good to see you. The cool thing about this is you're not expecting it to be as warm as it is. You, If you've done any diving, in the Caribbean, the water's warm, it feels great. This is amazing when it comes to the water temperature. Oh, it's good to see you too. I don't, I don't have any makeup on, so you're, you're getting fresh face today, no, no real jewelry or anything. Um, so you get in, you get underwater, and it feels like bath water is the only way that I can personally describe it. It feels like you're either in a hot tub or you're in a bathtub. You're just fully kitted up in gear and underwater and blowing bubbles or not. And you are surrounded by what just feels like bath water, which is kind of an unusual sensation when you are diving, even in warm water. This is, this is really warm. They don't allow rash guards. So if you are ever intending to go to the crater, you have to be prepared with either a rash guard or, I'm sorry, they don't allow wetsuits, so no neoprene. So you can wear a rash guard, top, bottom, that's fine. We had one gentleman who attempted to get away with one millimeter wetsuit, and he tried to pull it off as a rash guard, and I don't I don't know that it necessarily was a rash guard. It looked like neoprene to me. However, you have an interesting experience once you get under the water. They have some cool little features for you to look at. There's uh, a platform in the distance off to the right, which is a wooden platform. Might hold up to six people, maybe. And they had something that I've not seen before. And they have PVC piping to act as a platform that is suspended at about 20, 18, 20 feet, uh, 17, 18, 20 feet, somewhere in there. I'd have to go back to my dive computer to look, but they have it on buoys, six buoys, and it's suspended and it's just PVC piping. So you can have an instructor or a dive master in the center of it and the students around it, which was kind of cool. It gives you a different perspective about students trying to work on and maintain buoyancy right from the get-go. So as soon as you get them in the water, they're able to hold on to this PVC instead of kneeling, right? So nobody's on their knees, nobody's on, on the bottom kicking up any kind of silt. That's another thing. You get down to, I want to say it may have had a max depth somewhere between, I don't recall off the top of my head. It may have been somewhere between 40 and 60 feet down at the bottom, the very bottom. And this thing is pitch black. So they have lights up in the ceiling and you definitely need torches of some sort. Uh, the, it's just, it's dark. It's a crater. You get down to the bottom and there is a, the spring portion of it where it is bubbling up out of the mud and it looks like oatmeal literally looks like oatmeal popping up out of the ground. Still very hot, very 96 degrees. And one of the instructors took my hand and pushed it down into it, which was kind of a cool experience because you're feeling it pop and bubble up the entire time. There was also a skeleton there. I don't know if the skeleton that they had in there was a normal feature or if he was just because we're getting close to Halloween. But it was, it was still cool to see that down there. 
Otherwise, there's not a whole lot to see inside this crater. There just really isn't. It's fabulous for training. It served a purpose for us. I do believe that they allow kayaking or swimming. However, we were there so flipping early. What's up, F.A.? <laughs> Look, this is as close as you're going to get today, too. So, sir, um, we we had our purpose served. We were there so stinking early. I think we got there at like six in the morning. So absolutely nobody else was there that day. We were able to get in, do our debriefs and our briefs and do skills and had no one really there to bother us. The staff there were so excited I loved them. They were really, really cool. So if you ever end up at the Homestead Crater in Utah, the staff is fabulous. They will treat you wonderfully. They were absolutely accommodating. They were just really cool people. Let's see. Minus 857 degrees. That's way too cold. Chris, I, I will tell you that someone may be inflating the chilly temperatures here today in Georgia. However, if we take a look at my widget on my phone, it says that it is currently 49 degrees, uh, but I'm, I'm further north than those at Dive Talk, but not by much. Uh, kind regards from the Scuba Men International Headquarters. Thank you, Hefe. So uh, is this a, a new thing for you? Are you going to start Scuba Men International? Or are you still going to be our surface support and our 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 main our mainland support you know you're gonna have to come back to the states and i don't know maybe go to the dive talk meetup you were just in georgia stephanie what part of georgia were you in oh epic thank you I'm glad that you're always supporting me. I'm not the only one you support. You do a ton for other people too. We set a bunch of records for high temp in Western Washington this week. Funny thing, Chris, I was just in Seattle not too long ago, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Let's see. You dove at the aquarium? That's awesome. Where you were in the big tank, I'm assuming, because they don't do diving anything else except the shark tank, but that's not really diving. That's they carry you around on a track. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So if we go back to my lovely, boring story about IE, we spent uh, just the exam portion was at Homestead Crater. The gentle diets, yes. I, I must, I'm assuming you had an absolutely wonderful time because I know I, I've done it at least three times now and I'd still do it again. So Homestead Crater, we, we only used that for the open water portion of the checkouts and it was, it was great. When it comes to becoming an open water instructor, what's more important, technique or attitude? That is a great question. I think that it is a combination of the two. I think when you are becoming an open water instructor, you definitely have to have the attitude and the mindset. You are going to be responsible for students. And I also believe that technique has to be there. I don't believe you want to be in a position if you are not confident or feeling secure about your own skills or demonstrations or being able to help somebody else with those types of skills, especially brand new students. You've got people in a pool and someone taking off their mask. They're going to be nervous about that. I had one student not too long ago in a class that I was shadowing who tried to drink the entire pool through her nose every time she tried to remove her mask. Being able to talk to those anxious or nervous students and being able to provide them a little comfort and reassurance during those times when they're nervous, I think it's both technique and attitude. Just saying. Patience, yes. Patience and humility, I think that's also a, an interesting 
factoid, Stephanie, when you bring that up, it reminds me that when I was in my open water class way back in 2018, the instructors that I had at the time were not necessarily patient. Uh, and I certainly don't believe they had a whole lot of humility, but I do think that your own personal experiences and struggles in the skills that you do for open water and as you start to advance, hello, ma'am, sorry, I have a cat right here. When you start to talk to new students about those skills, you can share your own personal experiences. Like when I did mask removal for the longest time, it made me very anxious and very nervous. We're gonna have a visitor, guys. No. Oh. And of course the camera went blurry there. Let's see. Yeah, I just, I think that being able to share, share your own personal experiences and whether or not you messed up or you were nervous or anxious, I think those are all important things. One of the other things that I think that I will talk about at some point, just when you go back and look through videos of footage and you're seeing yourself doing things that are not correct or you mess up or you're doing things you're not supposed to like swimming with your hands, I think that there is a small piece of humility in that because you're able to see and show others that you're human. You know, we, we are all subject to the things that happen to us. If you if you look at the footage where Dive Talk shows the fun dive that we did before the stress and rescue class, you'll see that there were some portions in the wreck right in the beginning where I was swimming with my hands. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. And let me share. I have a black cat as well. Her name is Luna. Hi to your cat. This is Cassie. I call her her Your Majesty the Darkness. She is my grumpy old lady out of the three cats that are residing in this house. There are two that are absolutely sweethearts until they're not, but they're very sociable. All, all three of our cats are sociable. Um, Cassie just happens to be my grumpy old lady. Right there. <laughs> And now you saw the outside of my neighborhood. But you'll you'll notice in the fun dive that we did before stress and rescue that I was swimming with my hands. Here's a fun fact. We had did a hot drop. Pets always make it into the live stream. They do. Ours, ours here in, in this house love. I'm a, I could be on a conference call and talking to 300 people. And a cat has to find its way up and either play with the camera or show its backside. Take your pick. However, so we're, we get in, we do a hot drop in South Florida. There's a lot of moving current. If you do not manage your timing on your ascent, or I'm sorry, your descent well, you could miss the wreck. We ended up going down rather quickly. I thought I was doing well managing my ears. I didn't manage my ears very well. And by the time we had hit the second atmosphere, right around 35, 40 feet, my left eardrum popped. Well, I was trying to pull myself together, make sure I was okay. I was feeling my ear, make sure I wasn't bleeding. Not that I would have been able to see that anyway, because it likely would have just dissipated given the amount of water. We were continuing to go down. I was getting my bearings, making sure that I wasn't having vertigo and that I was still okay to dive. With a popped ear, you're probably thinking maybe you shouldn't have kept diving, but I did. And I'll own that. But when we got to the bottom of the wreck, I was still trying to pull myself together to make sure that I was okay. Making sure I had my bearings, making sure that I felt okay. I wasn't dealing with vertigo, wasn't getting a headache. And then we get to portions of the wreck where we're going in. It wasn't really penetrating. It was more like swim throughs, just sections of the, of the ship that you could have maneuvered around a little bit. Well, there were already two people in there. I was following them in. 
we were very close to the bottom and I was not going to silt anything up. So instead of doing lots of kicks in an area that I was unfamiliar with, I was moving around with my hands a little bit. Some people get a little judgy around that, but that's okay. We had also, after that, did a bunch of looking around the, the shipwreck outside of it. And uh, I think I did pretty well for the most part, considering I just had ruptured, <laughs> ruptured my eardrum. And uh, what made that clear for me is when we had started to go up, I was bubbling. My ear was bubbling. Um, I didn't ask anybody to take a look or see if it was actually uh, had bubbles coming out of it. You could just I could hear it popping and fizzing all the way to the surface. It was great. What else has gone on here recently? Went diving this past weekend and hung out with Doug Eversall and Josh Underwood. Scuba Men International Headquarters. <laughs> hey, Heidi. How are you? You know, F.A. has to throw his two cents in and provide his commentary, which is great. I love you too, Heidi. I don't. I don't know that I'd want F.A. for president. He. We would. We would. We would never hear the end of it. We. We would never hear the end of it. I don't know that I'd want F.A. for president. But this past weekend, went diving with Doug Eversall and Josh Underwood for the cross for his crossover. I was just hanging out, practicing, and getting time on my unit. Let's see here. Andrew says. Why didn't you abort the dive when you had an ear injury? That's a great question, Andrew. I probably should have. I probably should have hindsight being 2020. But the logic that I had behind it is that I wasn't in excruciating pain. I am uh, relatively familiar with ear problems because I've had them the majority of the time that I've gone diving. This particular type of injury is the most common barotrauma that there is when it comes to diving. It is definitely common. I wasn't in excruciating pain. I didn't have any vertigo. I felt okay. And making the call for myself, I felt like I was still safe to dive. I dove the rest of the weekend, still managed stress and rescue. Honestly, I was probably okay. When I got to the doctor, the only concern was because there was a, a tiny spot that they could see where there might have been a rupture due to pressure that I probably could be subjecting myself to an ear infection. So what they did was gave me steroids and an antibiotic and I went on my way. Two weeks later, I was due to dive again. And for IE, I had to fly. I had to go down to at least 30 feet and went to the ENT before getting on the plane. The day before I was due to get on the plane to go to my instructor exam, I went back to the ENT that I had visited and had them re-examine me. They did a hearing test. My hearing had improved back to what it was prior to the injury. They did an exam on the ear itself and everything was fine. There was no dark spot. Everything looked okay. She was not concerned. I said, even if you feel that there are, Terry is on the juice. I am not F.A. You're cute. Um, I don't know that I would call it savage, but I definitely, I felt that I was fine. And I managed myself after the fact to make sure that I was holding myself to my own standards and if there if there would have been any kind of issue the day before I left for my instructor exam, I wouldn't have gone. I had already resigned to that and I would have been OK with it. I would have rescheduled. Um, I had Landon from I'm going to sneeze um, a key down in Florida say, you know, if if this doesn't work out for you, let me know. We can work on scheduling another IE for you. So if I had a backup plan if I had to bail out. I had a backup plan if I wanted to bail out. Uh, being a certified CCR is so far off for me mentally. I just feel like it's going to be such a challenge to complete. If I have to ask you, so if you feel that it's a challenge mentally for you, is it something that you feel like the information is too much? Being able to consistently manage your PO2 is going to be too much? 
or you know some people I, even even myself included i am adhd well add but is is it something that you feel like you're not able to manage the attention span that you might need throughout the entire dive I'll tell you for me I end up hyper focused so I'm I'm paying more attention to my PO2 managing my air and my buoyancy and my wing and I I honestly feel like I like the challenge because I have to constantly pay attention the the information the discipline the comp I totally understand yeah I I promise you it's not for everyone but I also promise you that it is it is far more rewarding than open circuit. At least it is for me. I have fallen in love with closed circuit diving, the silence, the challenge, and the the intellect that is required, the, the attention to detail that is required, the focus that's required. It's challenging. I'm not going to lie. And look, there she is. It's challenging. I'm not going to lie, but I I am 100%. If I had the ability to dive CCR every day and make money instead of, you would not be dead really quick, Heidi. Um, you would find me underwater in my rebreather every day. I, that's, I just know if ands or buts about it. I have fallen in love with this thing. Yes, ma'am. Do you not have anything better to do? Apparently she does not. Um, let's move to Mexico. I am tempted, darling. I would I would move to Mexico or the Caribbean or Florida. Uh, no, go away. Unless you're coming up here to talk to people, go away. Let's see. Have I missed any question? How was the training for you and how comfortable do you feel about your ability and experience so far? If you don't feel 100% currently, when do you feel you will start feeling closer to that? So let me be honest with you. The training itself was challenging. What I got to see this past weekend with Doug doing a crossover or Dr. Ebersol doing a crossover for Josh Underwood, which if you guys have not checked out his channel, he and Dean have a new channel. Well, not that new, but a new channel called Into the Overhead. If you haven't checked them out. It is more cave diving, but they're different than dive talk. They're not doing a whole lot of cave diver reacts. They are talking about experiences and training and things in the overhead environment. So if you haven't checked out their channel, go check them out. But what I learned is that every instructor, once you get to the tech level, is different. I appreciate what I heard and how I saw Doug do the crossover for Josh. Josh is already certified on multiple rebreathers. So this was the, the, the technical information, the science behind it, why not a whole lot of new information for him. It was more KISS specific or spirit. Actually, he did the Sidewinder specific than to what he was, has for his other units. So I appreciated the way that Doug was presenting and going through the information differently than the way Woody did, because I did my training with Woody. I feel that I was, this weekend, and every time that I dive now, I'm building confidence and practicing my skills. And one of the things that I heard this weekend that resonated the most with me is Every training, every dive is a training dive. So every dive that you go on when you're doing CCR, you should be practicing skills. It's not about, oh, well, I've already done these skills. I already know how to do it. Don't get complacent. This stuff can kill you if you're not paying attention or if you're not doing things correctly. I think we've seen enough of potential incidents and things where people lose their lives when they're not being careful or they end up complacent that every dive should be or have some element of practice. For me, this past weekend, we had went to Lake Denton, nothing to see in Lake Denton, nothing at all. But uh, th while they were practicing skills, I was working on my transitions. I was trying to manage my trim and buoyancy. And it's 
super easy to manage your transitions. And when I say transitions, I'm talking about your ascent and your descent. Um, yes, ma'am. And you're managing your PO2 while you're either descending or going up and what you add or adjust is different for each of those transitions. And I'll tell you that it, because you're touching numbers that can be dangerous in the wrong direction, it makes me anxious. But the more I do it, the more deliberate I am about the adjustments that I make to make sure that my PO2 is in range or in the appropriate range, I'm getting more comfortable. I'm getting more confident. I'm getting to know my unit specifically more which allows me to build those muscle skills and muscle memory for what works for my unit and what works for me and my breathing. And I think that if I keep that in mind and continue to practice, I will feel much more comfortable. Um, I don't ever want to say that I'm, I'm feeling a hundred percent FA, but I'm definitely growing in confidence, practicing my skills every time I dive. And I think that's important. Like this next trip, we're supposed to be going this weekend on a Meg Tooth trip out with my unit. Yes, everybody loves to laugh at me with that. But what else am I going to call it? My rebreather, my unit sounds fun. Um, I definitely want to get CCR certified for sure. Currently at 99 dives, though only three of which are trimix. So, you know, I talk to your instructors out there. Tell them you're interested if you haven't already. That's all I can say. The information, the discipline, we already talked about that. FA, I'm pretty sure you could take anything somebody says and make it dirty. That's just how you roll. Let's see. Did I miss any questions? I don't think so. Shannon! You should name her, obviously. So I did have a moment of naming my unit. And if anyone is familiar with the Indian holiday, Holi, it is a festival of colors and light. And if you look at my unit, it currently has every stinking color you could possibly find. That is so good to hear. Arrogance can kill. We all have the hesitations. It's comforting to hear you're working to get more confident. You know, there is no room for ego in tech diving. At least in my opinion, there's not. I think that when you get complacent or you are completely, look, I'm going to go for it. Um, if you If you end up leading with ego instead of, the mindset that you are constantly practicing and constantly working to get better. I think you're going to make a mistake somewhere silly that could potentially cost you your life. And there's no reason for that. Maybe Cassie. Oh, that's not bad. I kind of like that, Shannon. I do. I like that a lot. My my unit has all sorts of colors on it. I've got orange, green, pink. Uh, I think I have blue, green. Every color I can possibly think of is on there. Would I like to change it? I'm not. I'm not married to being a solid color. I think a lot of people have solid colors for all of the bits and bobbles on their unit. I would love if 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 it is an option to potentially get my canisters painted and then be rainbow. I mean, why not? Call it FA, you can always up now, sir. Now, now FA, you're 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 being funny there. Sometimes we don't know what to do with FA. Sometimes. Other times we just tell him to stop talking. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. What else did I say that I wanted to talk about? Diving this weekend with Doug and Josh was really cool. The second location that we went to was uh, Paradise Springs, which is where I did the majority of my training. Ken was out there with us. 
which was super cool. He brought his um, smaller DPVs, which I was not ready to play with. He offered them to me, showed me how to use them, and I decided I was not ready. I watched him play with it. I watched him kind of scoot around. But I've there were so many people this weekend at Paradise Springs. I don't think I've ever seen that many people there, like, ever. It was packed. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to keep talking. Let's see. What else did I do this weekend? Um, after Paradise Springs, uh, we this weekend, this coming weekend, should we not get blown out, we will be diving with Mike Young at, in North Carolina on a Meg 2 hunt, which is super, super cool and exciting. Good for you knowing when to say no under. Yeah, I, I just, I wasn't ready to, I mean, DPV, his, his, the two units that he had were slower and smaller. And do I think that I would have gotten myself into trouble playing with it? No, but I was not willing to risk it and try to manage my PO2 while going up or down with a DPV. I wasn't quite ready for that. Did your trip to Maryland get rescheduled and now you're going to come dive with us? Um, so that's this weekend, Heidi. You guys are going to Florida this coming weekend, correct? We are going to North Carolina and diving uh, the Meg Tooth Hunt, providing we do not get blown out. If we get blown out, there will be plan B. Yeah, we will be heading to the spring. So no, honey, I won't be diving with you this weekend in Florida. I apologize. But let's, let's not lose sight that we can absolutely head down to Florida somewhere during the winter because it's always warm in Florida. Yeah. But you have a great group of people that you're diving with. Oh, don't cry. You're going to make me sad. You're going to make me sad. Let's see. I'm looking around my camera to see how many people we have here. So, um, And I said I'm again. I want to go Meg Tooth Diving. So Meg Tooth Diving, where we're going in North Carolina, is about 100, 115 feet at the ledge. I know that there are some places out in, yes, exactly. For you, that would be too deep. I know that there's some places in Florida that are either shore diving or not that deep that you can potentially do shark tooth, excuse me, shark tooth hunting on. That would be fun. And after, after that, after the shark tooth hunting um, or the springs, wherever we end up, depending upon the weather, the next thing that's up for me is DEMA, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to go talk to everybody who is a vendor, talk their ear off. Uh, there's so many. I was looking at the vendor hall today, the map, and who all is there. Everybody and their brother is there. I'm excited to go see who I can bug. It's going to be great. And they have speakers every day. So I'm, I'm sure that there'll be some fabulous content and I'm taking a camera and we'll, we'll see what kind of fun things that I can get up to or what kind of trouble I can get up to or who I might run into it. Dima, you just don't know. Find and tell us about the best new gear and stuff. That should be awesome. That is the intent. You never know what you're going to see. Uh, yes, ma'am, it is in Orlando and in about two weeks. I'm so excited. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. What other questions do you guys have for me? Otherwise, it is 38 minutes in. We can keep talking. I wonder if there is a way... Nope. That's okay though. So in, in the, the travel news, let's talk about, got to meet my kid for dinner. Glad I caught you. Oh, I hope you guys have had fun for dinner or are about to have fun for dinner. When I say plan B, if we get blown out, that will be the springs down in Florida. So it's not going to be where you guys are, but we're going to go probably mess up some springs somewhere. We potentially could head to Florida, but it's not going to be as far south as you guys are going.
just depends. Right now, the the weather we we still haven't canceled, so we're still. I know you're pounding, Heidi. I'm sorry. We will make the call later in the week to see if we're going to still head to North Carolina or if we're going to look at Plan B. And then after after DEMA. I am probably going to find a weekend that I can go nail down date wise and go dive with Woody in South Florida before I do eye surgery in December and I will be out of the water for at least a month. Because I would like to get rid of the contacts and glasses. They're just a pain in the butt. And now that I'm upstairs in my new office, and I'm working on redecorating my walls. You can see I've got a picture from Fan Ping. Um, that is actually Paradise Springs. I liked the picture so much and felt so connected to it. Having done my CCR training there, I ended up acquiring one of his pictures, which was fun. He's a nice guy, super, super nice guy. Can't wait to, he's already talked about cave diving and you know when I get there and he'll take pictures and all that good stuff he's such a nice guy what else is going on after eye surgery I will probably be out of the water for a little bit and then we're into January goodness gracious next year right now on the books January I'm going to Cozumel you guys are more than welcome to come along However, the trip that everybody should come along on is the Dive Talk Meetup, which happens in July. Who all's going? Anybody else going? I know somebody else out, out there who's chatting or who's been chatting is going. Shannon. Oh, hi, you guys have a big list. Wow. Devil's Den and Blue Grotto are very simple. I think you'll like them. Manatee Springs, I don't think they allow diving this time of year, but I think you'll at least be able to snorkel. Troy Springs, Peacock Springs, I'm not certain what you guys are going to get up to at Peacock. And Jenny, oh, oh, you're actually going dive talk. That's funny. Gee, didn't think that that was a thing. If you guys didn't show up to your own meetup, I'm, there is a long list of people who would be very disappointed. All Patrick's idea on the agenda. Manatee is open to open water in Catfish Hole. All right, very cool. So I guess you will be getting up to some stuff. So Gus and Woody are going to go to the Dive Talk meetup. Who knew? Shannon and Dave are going. They are some people here local in Atlanta. Uh, they own Atlanta Printing here in the Atlanta area. I have some, some crazy cool stuff worked out um, with them for some printing, working on some other ideas. If Gus and Woody are going, Heidi, you should go. Gus and Woody are going, but more importantly, I'm going, so. And if you haven't heard, the guest list of speakers is freaking phenomenal. So if you're not going, you're silly. There's just no other way to put it. I heard they are going to give away some ridiculous prizes. Oh, yes. You know, come to think of it, let's talk about giving away ridiculous prizes. I'm not quite there yet. I'm not consistent enough with the content, but... The second that I make it to a thousand subscribers, I have something in the works that's along the lines of ridiculous to give away. So we'll have to we'll have to keep talking that one up. But yes, I know for a fact I've heard rumors about the things that they're going to give away at the meetup. Heidi, you remember how you won all that cool stuff during the meetup this last time? The prizes this time. Don't even compare. All, all ridiculously cool stuff. I'll be hooking in Atlanta to make the money. Hey, you know what? Nobody's judging you. A weekend at Woody's and ATL. 
Hey, you know what? He he does still have the the lake house. I don't know that that's going to be a prize this time, but you never know. They they have done crazier things. But you know, if you're going to be selling yourself to make money in Atlanta, I'm I'm pretty sure that there's still a niche market on you know, only pans <laughs> that will allow you to um, sell pictures of your feet. Oh no, I want the St. Regis and L. Well, you're not going to make any money <laughs> that way, honey. You won't make any money that way, but you could try. And Woody's not there for the next six months anyway. He's in Florida working on his big blue swim schools. Hang on one second here. The concert isn't. Oh. Sorry, guys, I got a message. Okay, so um, yeah, if you try to make money at the St. Regis, you're a you're good, you're only going to be snuggling up to Amy and L and potentially their daughters, but um, Woody's not there, so you'll be quite lonely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's get back to the dive talk meetup. I'm personally super stoked and excited that their guest list of speakers is anywhere near as cool as I thought it was going to be. Christina Zanato, my personal dive heroine will be there. I cannot wait to not only see her in person, meet her, potentially hug her. Please don't hate me for wanting to hug you, Christina. I love you so much. Um, and then, uh, you know, all of the cool people looks amazing, right? Of course, want to be at the Cosmo meetup. If I start selling stuff, <laughs> Jonathan Bird's going to be there from B Jonathan's Big Blue World. Um, let's see who else is going to be there. Mike Young's going to be there. Brian Kaycock's going to be there. I, I believe the reality of waking and humble. Ed the hottie. I'm not saying a thing about Ed. No, thank you. Uh, but I'm going to let you, Heidi, make all of the commentary about these dive gods and their, their looks. If you feel the need to call Ed a hottie, you go right ahead. Don't send him this video. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> right, right. Oh, my goodness. Who, if you could have any one person there to speak at the meetup or a future meetup, who would it be? I am going. Get out. I will be there. I haven't been asked to speak because I say um too much, but you know, one of these days I will get that out of my vocabulary and I will be able to be a fabulous public speaker and have something relevant to say. I don't know, but would make more sense to spend that money on getting a kiss. You, you know, F.A., I'll make a deal with you. When I go to buy my Sidewinder, When I go to buy the Sidewinder or the next CCR device that I'm going to have, I will let you purchase my spirit for a ridiculously cheap price. Ho! Oh, oh, Ho! F.A. F.A. Sit down. Sit down. Hold up. So, this weekend, wait, do y'all have tea? Do y'all have tea? Do you need to get some tea? Do you need to go get some tea? Cause I'm a, I'm about, I'm about to spill it. I'm about to spill it. If you don't have a beverage, go get one now. Okay, you ready? Dr. Harry's gonna be there too. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Somebody said the magical word. Ryan showed up at Paradise Springs this weekend. Ryan showed up at Paradise Springs this weekend. Now, what's the first thing I did? I'm looking around to see who's with him. And then Doug went over and introduced himself. He and, and Josh had already made connections, which was great. I went over and introduced myself. Here's what I'm going to tell you about Ryan. He has a little bit of a rough exterior, and that's fine. That's just who the guy is. 
I really honestly believe that all of the drama and all of the things that have transpired over the past couple of weeks have maybe had an impact on him. I think he honestly now sees the value, even though our community of divers can be harsh. Listen, y'all, there is there is no lie, no lies detected. The community of divers, open circuit, closed circuit, can be a little rough around the edges, almost toxic sometimes. Just depends on where you are, what you're talking about, and who's doing what. I honestly think that this has impacted him enough that the guy wants to do better, wants to be better, wants to set a better example for his son. That's based on a five minute conversation that I had with the guy at Paradise Springs. Could he have pulled the wool over my eyes? Sure, anything is possible. He seemed genuine. I think that, that there was enough of a, hey, what you're doing is potentially dangerous and stupid. Don't endanger yourself. Even more so, don't endanger your kid. Okay, I'm still going to go dive. I'm still going to go get in the water. I'm still going to go do things because I'm the same way. Tell me not to do something. Hold my beer. But I'm smart enough to go do the training to be safe because being a safe, smart, autonomous diver and being able to take care of myself and those around me are my goals. I can't say that those are his goals or were his goals, but we might have broken through just a little bit to make sure that the guy sees the value in the fact that training is a good thing. Doug has offered to do some training for him. I know lots of other people have made commentary to him about wanting to train or where to train or who to reach out to for training. So let's hope that for the betterment of himself and his kid, he actually goes and takes Doug up on it or he takes somebody else up on it and has some decent training and that he does continue to dive and do smart things and be a better guy. But he showed up. Let's see. The defamation of the dive site. I didn't talk to him about that. I probably should have, but I there was not enough in me to want to push that button with him. I wanted it to be a good experience. If nothing else, if nothing else, if we get through to him to want to be better and do better instead of being this guy who is hold my beer, I'm going to go fuck it all up for no reason, then I think that we're doing the right thing, right? He's not a bad guy. I don't think he wants to be a bad guy. I think he wants to be included in the rest of the community, just like anybody else does. I can't hate that. You know, uh, I hate the actions that led him to where he's at, but I think that he's gotten a light bulb go off and that he really wants to do and be better. Um, Trogman says, we took him to dinner after Buford, and I have to agree that he is trying to be better. He's been back to Buford, and he wrote in the algae, so no permanent damage. Okay. Still wouldn't do that. I get it. He had he had a moment, but that look, to me, that looks like a temper tantrum, right? Temper tantrum of a child. However, my own personal experience, which is where I find the value, right? I had my own conversation with him. He asked questions about my rebreather while we were there, him and his buddies or whoever else he was there with, they were talking about it. And, and you know, it, I'm fine to answer questions. And I told him next time that he gets together with Doug or sees Doug that he could do a try rebreather with an instructor. I said, for me, he can absolutely try my unit on and see what he thinks. To, I mean, it's heavy, you know, let him see what it's like. But um, I do hope that he understood that when I was telling him that Woody and Gus want nothing but the best for him, that even though he may have felt chastised or picked on or beat up by the dive community, it's really out of a passion for safety and nobody getting hurt. What we don't want in the dive community is enough accidents happening where local authorities or government get involved to where they start feeling like they have to police us and our activity 
So when we police our own and we police our own activity, we can be kind of harsh. And I think not that it's right, but sometimes the intent behind that is 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 the right thing, right? Maybe not the action, but the reason why people get so uptight or scrutinize our own. Um, good points and a great way to look at it, Terry. You know, I, I hope that if he learns nothing else, that he understands that nobody in this community wants to see him or his kid hurt and just go get some training, go be a better diver, go be a safe diver, go be a good example for your kid. How hard is that? You know, I, I think that his heart may be moving towards the right place and he wants to do the right thing. Other than that, I wish nothing but the best for the guy. Let him go be a good diver and, and learn some good stuff. And, you know, be if he wants to be a leader in the dive community, great, let him. If he wants to be the wrong kind of leader in the dive community, I, he'll get what comes to him. I think that there is there is a lot of opportunity for him here. If he does the right things, takes the right steps, takes the right actions. I think the guy is a nice guy and I think he really wants to do the right thing. I think what we saw is a human reaction to what he felt was being chastised. And that really wasn't the case. He was being, he put his stuff out there for people to see. So people are going to give their opinions. I saw nothing wrong with what happened, but the entire community came down on him. And now I just hope that he takes some good action behind it and becomes a good diver. And that's all I'll say about Ryan. I hope our paths cross again someday and that he is continuing to improve. That's all I can hope for the guy, if that makes sense. Back to the dive talk meetup. Let's go. I'm going. Who else is going? Who's going to come have a drink with me in Cozumel? Me. I'm going to have a drink with me in Cozumel. Who else? There's still seven of you rocking out there with me. Listen to me run my mouth. <laughs> I really wish I could. I want to. The cool thing about getting in now, Stephanie, is if you do, you're able to break up the payments into chunks. I know, Heidi, I would love for you to come. Come on. Come on. Get your art together. Start selling your art. Make some money. Come with me to Cozumel. You go and you put out, put down a deposit and then they have payment chunks that happen throughout the year. I'm just saying, Stephanie, it's going to be so cool. This is going to be the largest dive meetup of recreational and tech divers in the same space at the same time, all going diving together. They are going to pull every boat this resort has there will be morning dives. There will be afternoon dives there. I mean, it's just going to be utterly amazing. What are the chances you'll hold a giveaway for it? If I make it to a thousand subscribers, I will absolutely help somebody get to Cozumel. I can't promise that I'll pay for the whole thing, but I would absolutely help someone go to Cozumel. Damn, you sell it well. I'll look into it tonight. Honey, I'm just telling you, it's going to be the most amazing time you will ever have on a dive vacation. This is a five-star resort. It, you know, that's that, that right, hello, that, that is why, that's not the only reason I'm going, but that's why I'm going. <laughs> that's why I'm going. I get to meet Christina Zanato. I am so stupid excited. You have no idea. I want to study with her so bad. I, I have been asking for that to be a Christmas present or a birthday present for years. I just want to go study with her and spend time with her. But you know what? She's a cave and cavern instructor too, which is also on my list of things to accomplish. Yes, the extra bratty one. I let her go pretty cheap. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying the, the kids can earn some money. But this thing is, there's going to be speakers every night. I'm sure that the way that Dive Ventures pulls this event together, I know the gal who is the head coordinator for uh, this particular event. She is amazing. I absolutely love her. And I know that this is going to be the most incredible event. She's going to be exhausted afterwards, but she is going to throw dive talk one hell of an amazing event and i am going to be there the whole time 
So I will have fun. We will go have drinks or, you know, be able to rock it out at dinner or whatever the case. There will be amazing speakers, basically dive royalty in the States and slightly beyond. And, um, you know, people who were actually a part of rescuing children. I don't know. I think that there's some really incredible speakers lined up to come blow our minds around things that they've done, the work that they've done, the things that make them and their work attractive to us. We're going to go get to hear them speak about it. Let's see. Come on, Heidi, you know you want to go. I'm just saying there's a payment plan. You don't have to pay it all at once. Flights to Cozumel are not that expensive. The, my flight to Indonesia is going to cost me a one hell of a lot more than that. F.A., you know you want to go. I'm just saying. Is he still there? Possibly. All the OGDT people got to buy some damn art. <laughs> well, you're still in the group. I don't want to tell people how to live their lives, but there's only a handful of rooms left. Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear, did you hear that? There's only a handful of rooms left. That means there's a lot of people going. Gus is the devil. <laughs> Heidi, that may have made my night. That was amazing. I don't think he's the devil, but he certainly uh, leads with temptation. That's for sure. I'm not going to tell people how to live their lives, but you should come hang out with me. I mean, the dive talk guys and all the people that they have coming are cool, but you know, I may have stuff to give away there for this channel. Just saying. Have my own prizes. Let's see. We've been at this an hour. I did not intend to go an hour, but y'all are so much fun to hang out with. Too bad I don't have this set up to where I could bring you guys on camera and, and pull somebody in with me. I don't have it set up. She has some pretty amazing art there, Stephanie. You guys should connect. What's up? El Diablo. <laughs> I don't know, Gus. What do you prefer? Temptation, Satan, El Diablo. The de Gus is the devil. Gus is a saint. Now we have Gus as a saint. El Diablo Gustavo. That's that's hilarious. I'm gonna let you call y'all keep coming up with nicknames for him. This is amazing. We need Woody that Woody needs to have one too. Although it's funny, as much as I support Dive Talk, I was recently called the Dive Talk Girl. I guarantee we will possibly most likely see a giant squid fighting orcas. There, there's, there's a lot to see in Cozumel. <laughs> Perfect. El Diablo Gustavo, like it. Uh, El Diablo is full of it. What is he full of, Heidi? What is it? J Flex, Alex, what are we going to call you today? Jeffrey, Alex, why do you think he's a saint? Terrible puns, lots of them. <laughs> uh, Gus will yell at them to get out of the way. Let's pretend Woody's here. Almost 2 a.m. Got to go to bed. Nice listening to you again, Terry. F.A. Sorry, I won't send you pictures. <laughs> Love you, dude. Oh, he's, he's very much the devil. Y'all are very punny. <laughs> very, very punny. Because he has all my answers to my stupid questions and normally Alex, but I have many names. He who goes by many names. 
Let's see that dragon. Oh, you want me to go get the big dragon? I have to go all the way to the basement for that. I'm on the third floor of my house and the, the big dragon is downstairs in the basement. Oh, I told you that does not exist. <laughs> yeah, I, that does not exist. I do not have any of that type of dragon in my house. Or anywhere else for that matter, just in case you decide that I, I do and it's somewhere else, just not my house. The, the, the biggest dragon in, in my house is probably about this big and this tall. It's paper mache and it was handcrafted by a guy in Seattle for a gift. It was a birthday gift for, for somebody for that wrote a book and had it um, crafted out of the character in a book. It was su it's super cool. There's actually a YouTube video on it being created, which is kind of amazing. Let's see. What I, I will make you a promise though, Alex, the next time I go live, I'll make sure the dragon is up here with me. I'll bring out my whole dragon collection just for you. What other questions do you guys have? Let's see. I think I've pretty much talked everything to death. I have some stuff coming up. I have uh, a couple of things that I want to do with some guests, guest hosts with me. And I think that one of the episodes that we're going to record, providing that the camera that I just acquired uh, works out for me the way that I want it to, I think will be a fun episode. It'll be funny. The ADV on the spirit, can you remove it? I know you can plug it. Gus, can it be removed? We'll see if he answers. I think he's still here. Oh, you have to remove it to plug it. Well, there's your answer, Alex. And let me tell you something, the configuration for the Sidewinder, you think the spirit's complicated. Holy Toledo, there's stuff everywhere. So does, does that, I will have to, I'll have to make a list of questions for the Sidewinder folks because that, that whole configuration was a lot. I thought the spirit was overwhelming. The, the sidewinder has a lot to it. And watching someone get into it to make sure that things were trimmed out the way that they needed to be, that was kind of intimidating. There was, there was a lot to that. Alrighty then, folks. I know that we've been here for an hour and eight minutes. Unless you have other questions. I mean, I could sit here and talk to you all night, but I'm sure you people have lives. Un poquito. I'm not promising you that my Spanish is better than Woody's, but it's it's probably one step above. If you can promise sea turtles and sharks, absolutely. I will really try to sign up and go. It was great chatting with you all. I will tell you, Stephanie, there are lots of turtles in Cozumel and I, I've i seen sharks. I mean, you see everything in Cozumel. You see everything in Cozumel. Let's see. 
If you're not hanging out, Stephanie, then absolutely. Thank you for coming. Okay, meet better work of breathing. I can't wait to get mine. What do you mean by meet better work of breathing? Eagle rays, yes, also eagle rays. Stephanie, come to Mexico, it'll be sweet. Alex, are you going? Are you signed up already? Bye. Stephanie, come to Cozumel, just sign up, just do it. You know you won't regret it. Alex, what do you mean by, okay, neat, better work of breathing? Are you talking about between the spirit and the, oh, punctuation. Okay, so that wasn't necessarily a question. Or are you comparing the work of breathing on a spirit versus a sidewinder, which I am not qualified to answer? Or do you have a different acronym in mind for WOB? Your fingers move slow. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We loved having you. You know, it is, we are sitting at an hour and 11 minutes. But Alex, I want to make sure if there is a question, you get it answered before I hop off. I would assume they are alike because I think the change was the counter lung. Fingers are too big for my phone. So uh, there is a change in the counter lung, but there, there's also a change in where the canisters sit. So instead of the canisters being on your back, they're on your sides, but the counter lung is also different. So are you asking if there is a, if the work of breathing is easier on the, the sidewinder versus the spirit? And Gus, you're the only one here qualified to answer that question. I was going to ask Doug to do a try rebreather for me for that particular unit, but there was a lot going on. So we changed plans. Alex, if he doesn't answer, We'll get you an answer. Heidi, you gonna come? I think you should. I think you should just sign up. You know, you have purchased a new brand new unit, right? So yours will easily convert to the Sidewinder. Mine being as old as it is, it will not convert at all. The counter lungs on the new spirit is nearly identical to the Sidewinder. The scrubbers connect in the center versus the ends, but the shape and size and placement on the body is nearly identical for, for the counter lung. So that, then that means that there shouldn't be a change in work of breathing, correct? beauty about the spirit and the side monitors counter lungs is they wrap around your actual lungs. So work of breathing is very similar regardless of trim or body position. <laughs> Heidi needs financial aid. Girl, don't we all? So there you go, Alex. I do believe you have your answer, sir.
Let's see. All right, team, we have been at this an hour and 15 minutes. I am going to let you get back to your evenings. That'll be cool. And that's what I guess good engineering Heidi come die or come drive a semi. You're going to put Heidi behind the wheel. I'm, I, I have questions. If you're if you're putting Heidi behind the wheel, I have questions. No more questions besides an, an invite to Heidi to drive your semi. You have horrible answers. So you don't have questions. You just have horrible answers. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right, guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for showing up for me today. This was literally spur of the moment. Didn't even think about it. Just threw it out there. Heidi, mwah, mwah, mwah. I hope you have a great night. Alex, have a good night. Who else is here? Stephanie's already taken off. Ooga Booga is already taken off. Oh, oh hell no. Nah. Yeah, you don't want you don't want Heidi behind the wheel of the semi. Trogman, thank you for coming. I appreciate you being here and hanging out with us and adding value to the conversation. I appreciate you. Um, if we clear all the roads, Heidi, you need a great big obstacle course safely and secured to drive around and no backing up. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me for this hour and 16 minutes. I hope you have a great weekend coming up. Uh, Heidi, I miss your face. I hope I get to see you again soon. Gus, Dive Talk, thank you for showing up. I am ready for the next adventure. I hope you all have a great night. See you next time.